Hello and welcome to another video in the IELTS Learning Tips series. And today I want to talk about writing. Uh, my name is Bernie Wall and I'm an IELTS trainer specialising in working with students who need bands 7 and 8 in their IELTS exam. And before I get started, I just uh, wanted to say that if you are uh, a student who needs band 7 and 8 and you need support, then there are two ways in which um, you can get that from me. One is to sign up to my website, ieltslearningtips.com, and there should be a link at the bottom here. And if you sign up there, you will find some free resources. You'll also get regular emails from me about things that I'm running and things that I'm doing to help you with your exam. And the second thing is to sign up to my Facebook group, which is uh, IELTS Band 7 and 8 Success Network. And again, there is a link at the end of this video and also a link on the page. And you can go along there, ask to join. And I try to post almost every day a little tip about how to improve your IELTS and how to get these high bands of 7 and 8. Now today, I want to talk about the things that you need to do in order to make sure that your writing is at band 7 and 8. And these things apply whether you're doing academic IELTS or whether you're doing general training. And they are mostly to do with language because after all IELTS is a language exam and the most important thing is your language and the way that you express yourself in English. And that's what will get you the band 7 and 8. Not the ideas or anything like that, it's the way you express them, the language you use, the vocabulary, etc. So let's get on with that. I've got, um, if I can find it, I've got here. A slideshow, which I'm going to share with you now. And we'll have a look at those things that are critical to achieving band seven and eight. Um, I often speak to students um, before working with them and I find that they are mostly asking me to help them with their reading and speaking but when we drill down into the results that they've achieved in the past I find that quite often their writing score is quite low but they don't really seem to want help with that which is quite surprising because to my mind the writing is the most difficult thing and I'm very surprised when they don't need help. Um, I think the reason is because many people feel it's easy. They think it's easier than the reading, easier than the speaking. And so they believe that they'll be able to do it themselves. And the reason that it's easy is firstly because there are lots of models to check and copy. Um, learning some vocabulary is not that difficult learning some some good sentences again is absolutely possible and you put these together and then using the language of the models you should be able to produce a band seven essay so on the surface of it that sounds very easy however in my opinion and my experience which goes over 20 years of teaching IELTS at band seven and above it's not really that easy it isn't. In, one of my students once called it the last frontier. And the students that I work on writing with often are getting bands 7.58 in their reading, in their speaking, in their listening. And the one that seems to always crash or not get to the level they want is the writing. And that makes sense because Writing is very difficult to move. A lot of people get stuck at 6.5. If you think about learning language, when you learn your own language, you are usually fluent by the age of seven. Not much before that, you can still make mistakes, but by the age of seven, you are fluent. So your speaking is in place, your listening is in place. It's at this point when you are in primary school that you start to learn to read, that you start to learn to write. 
so these things start at a, a you have to have a good command of English or, or of your language before you can start to do these things and the kind of writing that you need to write at uh, the the kind of writing you need to produce is going to be that of a sort of 18 to 21 year old native speaker so that's the level that you will need to be able to write at and that takes you when you're at school from the age of about seven up to the age of about 18 to 21 so it takes time to develop now obviously it's not going to take you that long because you've already done it in your own language but transferring those skills cause problems cause problems in grammar they cause problems in sentence structure and word order and these are things that you really have to address and they will be dependent upon your native language and so this interference we call it from your native language to english is going to be peculiar to you and people who speak your language so you need to address these things like grammar word order because even if you copy things from the models if you learn vocabulary if you learn sentence structure these things are going to interfere so you have to make sure that you address them as well it takes time to develop and band seven and eight as i've said are the equivalent of an 18 to 21 year old and older um, and people who are experienced in writing both at school at university and in their job and it's almost native speaker level and this is true there are lots of native speakers who take the IELTS exam and they don't get band nine there are other reasons for that which I won't get into because I'm interested in how you can manage to improve your score okay no but it takes work and it takes time so if you leave your writing right to the last minute chances are you will not have enough time to get that writing to band seven so don't focus only on your reading and your speaking make sure that the writing is something that you start to work on right from the point you begin doing your IELTS preparation and if you're stuck at band 6.5, and I would say most of the students I work with on writing are stuck at 6.5, um, you have to change what you're doing. If you keep doing the same as you're doing, you will always get 6.5. So you have to be prepared for some dramatic changes. Okay, so here are 10 things that you need to do now to make sure that your writing will get to band 7, 7.5 or 8. Don't try copy other pieces of writing. The examiners are trained to pick this up. They will know if this is copied or if this is memorized. So use the models to pick out vocabulary, to pick out some good phrases, good sentences, but then take them into your own voice. So write from your own voice, from your own um, perspective. Look at the band descriptors. If you don't have complex sentences, you cannot get band seven. If you don't have a wide range of linking words, you cannot get band seven. If you don't have a wide variety of um, vocabulary and flexibility in your sentence structures, you cannot get band seven. These things tell you what the examiner is looking for. So study them and see what you need. And if you don't understand them, because at the end of the day, they're really written for teachers, then ask somebody what it means. Post a message in my Facebook group or on my YouTube feed and I'll try and explain it to you. Don't make grammar errors. Grammar errors will cause you to lose marks, absolutely and utterly. Grammar errors, show that the English is not of a high quality. So you must address grammar errors before you address anything else. It should be flawless for band nine, no grammar errors at all, and for band seven and eight, there's a very low tolerance. So this is paramount. Don't repeat things. You need a good bank of synonyms. You need a good range of different uh, sentence structures and phrases. The examiners are trained to spot these things. They will pick them up straight away. And I know that because I used to be an examiner. 
plan well. If you plan, you can focus on language. I say this every day. If you don't plan, it becomes like a stream of consciousness and everything comes tumbling out. If you plan, you can focus on, have I repeated a word? Can, how can I say this in a different way? I've used that linking word, what other linking word will do? And you should have this in your head as you are writing. Okay. Do it in the time. So that means that within the 40 minutes for your task two and the 20 minutes for your task one, you need to be able to plan, to write, and to check. All three stages of the writing are important. And if you miss any of them, then you're going to have problems. Don't write too much. The more you write, the more there is a chance of making mistakes. And don't write too many tasks at once. Often students will send me three or four tasks and it's counterproductive because I know if I have three tasks all written together, they will have exactly the same mistakes. It's much better to write one, check it, look at what's wrong with it, or better still, have someone check it for you and then write another one with all of those things in mind. If you can get somebody to check it, it's the best thing because it's almost impossible to check it yourself and find everything. And if you pay for anything in your IELTS, pay for somebody to check your writing and pay for somebody that's going to check it well. They're going to tell you where the errors are. They're going to suggest how you can improve it. Just giving you a band is not enough. You need help to develop and improve your writing. Good feedback. This is what I said earlier. You need to know exactly how to improve it. If the person checking your writing is not able to do that, then it's probably not good value for money. So you must know what did I do wrong? How can I improve it? And how can I improve it overall? And that means if you're making a consistent grammar error, you need to have some grammar exercises to rectify that problem and remove it from your writing. And it is possible, once you understand why that is wrong, why you shouldn't do it that way, then you can avoid doing it next time. And the final one is to practice. So, it will take quite a long time. And in my experience, especially with those students who are getting 6.5, when we start working to go to seven, the first thing that happens is a lot of chaos. And be prepared for that. Everything you've done to, to now has to be turned on its head. And so at first there seems to be just a lot of mistakes, a lot of errors, things are not working, but you have to keep going because suddenly things will start to change and things will get better. The grammar errors will be gone. You will have a much better and more conscious idea of exactly what you need to do. And then there's a point at which that flips over and you know what you're doing. It becomes easier. It becomes faster. And you will feel that, right, I can do this now in the exam. And I know that when I do it in the exam, I'm going to get seven. I'm going to get 7.5. I'm going to get eight. But that takes time. And if you're racing against a booked exam date, then it's not necessarily going to happen in time for that exam date. So if you're struggling with writing, I urge you, don't book your exam until you've got over this hurdle. And again, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, you can join my Facebook. Here's the uh, details for that. You can get free resources on my website, ieltslearningtips.com. And um, there is a video here which you can watch. It's on my, um, my website about how to improve your writing. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. It was a bit of a romp through... Um, what you need to do, but it is really important that you do those things. So thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the Facebook group. I hope to see you uh, in my website so that I can uh, send you more tips and advice. Um, and I hope to see you on the next video. Bye.